Oh, good morning. Uh, Mike here from Curious Wines. This is Gary from Red Nose Wines. Hello, Gary. Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour. We have just left uh, Nice and we're heading along the south coast of France, heading towards the Languedoc. And Gary is going to tell us where we're going. Where are we going, Gary? I'm Michael. Um, at the moment, if the ridiculous amount of fast cars um, allow us, uh, we are going to. Uh, First of all, we're going to a little village called Montpellier. Uh, there's a nice little restaurant, wine bar. We're meeting Jeremy de Pierre, the winemaker from La Pierre. And tell me about La Pierre. La Pierre is um, slowly but surely becoming one of the superstars of the Languedoc. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk um, gave it 99 points. Uh, Parker has given it 96 plus. This is their top wine. This is La Pierre, um, but even their second and third wine are all in the 90s. Um, and there's a strong rumour that there's a wine from the Languedoc about to get 100 points. Fingers crossed. It, it might be La Pierre. No way. Let's see. And how did you discover them? Uh, I followed my nose one day on a trip to Languedoc and um, I'd heard about them through different people like Jancis Robinson. Um, I'd been raving about them for a while. And I looked to see if anyone had them in Ireland and uh, lo and behold, not yet. So I made a phone call and I was going down to Gassac anyway, which is right next door. And you're going to need a credit card now? No, I don't. I don't. I need a ticket. Oh. We take a ticket and we pay the bill. Very good. So Mike, I'll let you play that. And that was that? You followed your nose basically? I followed my nose. I heard, um, I, had, I did a lot of homework on, uh, on them. Um, I hadn't tasted them until I actually went to last uh, July. Mm -hmm. um, I went on a road trip and um, met Jeremy when I was down there. Um, tasted a lot of the vintages with him, from the barrel and from the bottle. And basically, from the minute I opened, I tasted the first one. It was just incredible. Said, "Wow, yes, please." And they're, they're they're fairly small production, are they? That they're, they're quite limited. Tiny. The first vintage of La Pierre itself, which is the uh, the iconic um, top wine, uh, 125 cases, I believe. They've since upped that. Um, I think it's about 250 now. Wow, still tiny. Tiny. And <coughs> with the export much? Just it's um, it's allocation at this stage. Um, I had to beg for the last the last shipment that came in. Because over the years got a, a big write up from uh, Larville at Christmas and since from John Wilson at the Times, and that's just the entry level wine that retails at 1950. Um, since then, uh, I, tried, I had to get it back in because it sold out on the back of the reviews more or less that, that day. Um, but I had to beg for, uh, for what I could put out against it. And it's obviously made its way across the Atlantic, the fact that Mr. Vaynerchuk is, is raving about it. Yeah, I think Solomon brings it in in, uh, in the States, um, and it's, it's, it's got quite a cool following over there. I'm not sure, uh, we can ask Jeremy later on today where, where the wine ends up, but um, I know that the last time I was here I stayed in a little hotel where we're actually staying tonight, um, and they wanted, when they heard I was going to meet Jeremy, they wanted to, me to bake to give them some wine for the, for the restaurant. Um, so, it's that kind of place, there's a Ferrari over there. Fantastic, okay. It's flashy yellow. Yep, flashy yellow. Yeah, flashy yellow, that's it. So, it'll go well in Curious Wines color, uh, color scheme. <laughs> Very good. Right, so um, so that's uh, uh, La Piera we're heading to first after lunch, and after that we are heading to uh, Master Domasca Sac to meet Samuel Gibert. Samuel Gibert and the Gibert family are fairly renowned in the Languedoc region. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, basically, um, Samuel's father, Amy, um, took on the domain, which was actually a farm that never grown. It was, the wine was never grown there um, in the late 70s. And he was looking for a house um, to, because he was in the leather business and the leather business had been more or less moved to China at that stage. So he was looking for something to spend his money on. And there were no vines at that stage? <coughs> no vines. Wow. And basically, um, em 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 Emile uh, Peno, the renowned oenologist from Bordeaux, worked with the, all the, the top estates in first growth in Bordeaux. Um, and he convinced him to come down and have a look at the terroir, and he said you can make a, you can really make a great wine here um, because we, you'll see it might be it might be haven't been, but it's up, up in an amphitheater, um, mm. quite up a hill, and it's completely it's coarse, um, Garrigue as the French call it. Um, it's a little uh, ecosystem in itself, and there's a famous story that if, if you've seen Mondavino the documentary, um, where Robert Mondavi, uh, the Mondavi family in California, tried to buy the other side of the valley, but they were going to raise there's a big forest there, and um, 
image if you're basically got the locals together to stop this. Um, because it, a it, local it, resistance. The local resistance. Against the American tyrants. Mm, actually what happened was very funny. The, the local mayor um, that Mondavi had approached um, was socialist and uh, he was ready to do a deal. Um, but an election came up just before the deal was to be done and a communist mayor got in and the communist mayor basically told the American where to go. <laughs> and uh, that's in a nutshell what happened. Nothing um, like a bit of protectionism. But you'll see when you see if, if they had to, if they had come on board and taken down that forest, um, that forest forms a massive natural barrier yes. um, to, the, to the vineyard. So yes. it forms one, one half or one side of the amphitheatre. So, so Fantastic, okay. And, and the, the, the Lefite, they call it the Lefite at the Languedoc. I suppose Mastodomas came out yeah, first. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've developed a terrific reputation over, what, 20 years now, maybe? Uh, no, more now. Um, I suppose the, the late 70s were the first vintages. Then, so. and, and were they received kind of with a, with a claim <coughs> very quickly? It was slow the first few years, and then basically some, um, uh, because of his connections in Paris with the leather business, he got, uh, Aimee got them into a few restaurants, in, top restaurants in Paris, and a couple of people started to notice them in the critics. And then um, after that, it suddenly mushroomed. Hugh Johnson got to taste them. And Hugh Johnson declared that they were uh, the defeat at the Languedoc. And the Grand Cru, the BD, someone, I think Michael Broadbent might have said. And then it just took, took on. And then people like Parker came, and came down. Parker was taking up, was starting at that point. Um, and it basically mushroomed from there. Wow. Okay. So, really looking forward to visiting all these guys. We're heading there now. We're probably going to be, what, two hours till we get there? Well, We've a bit of a, bit of a drive from Nice anyway. Well, fortunately, the car we have um, is not the fastest I've ever driven. So, uh, but it's lovely that we're in a little a Peugeot 206, and uh, ah, it's, it's comfortable. It might be the fastest, but we'll get there in good time, and uh, we'll show you a bit more later. Bye for now.